So this is the Sony a7R5, 61 megapixels, shoots 8K video, and has artificial intelligence in it. And I've actually had this camera for about 10 days now, but I've been shooting on it like crazy because A, you really can't test the camera without taking it out into the field. But B, this has been my go-to Sony camera now for the last couple of weeks, so let me tell you why. So here are some quick specs on the a7R5. You have a 61 megapixel backside illuminated sensor, just like the Sony a7R4. You have 10 frames per second in mechanical shutter, although there is a little asterisk with that that we'll touch on in a bit. Uh, we have an upgraded processor and autofocus system, although the amount of autofocus points are still the same as the a7R4. And you have 8K video up to 24 frames per second and 4K video up to 60 frames per second. So unfortunately, I did have to give back the a7R5 to Sony, but only for a few days. So I'll have it back in my hands next week. So if you guys want to see more with this camera, definitely follow me here, turn on notifications. Also lots of BTS over on IG, so you can hit me up there as well. But let's talk about this hardware and I'll preface it by saying that this is by far my favorite camera body that Sony makes as of today. Obviously, it looks pretty much identical to the Sony a7 IV or pretty much any Sony camera because Sony's been using this design for a while. On the plus side, that means that the battery grip hasn't changed, but hidden on the back is a brand new, at least for a Sony camera, it's an absolutely awesome four axis screen that combines the flip screen with a tilt screen. And this should make everyone happy. And I really hope that Sony starts using this on every camera going forward. So there are times I actually want my screen to be in my line of sight. So this is really awesome because you still have that tilt mechanism to keep it just right here. However, for those times that I need to be shooting vertically, low to the ground or high up, I have that for video, it's a flip out. Plus you can actually flip it even more and tilt it out to be able to clear those ports. So if you're a videographer, you're gonna love this. But yeah, this is by far far my favorite iteration of a flip screen. I am really glad that Sony chose to go with the flip screen too because I always hated those tilt only screens because obviously as a portrait photographer, uh, most of my images are shot vertically. So if I wanna tilt my screen away from the sun or to shoot higher or lower, I needed a flip screen and this has both. The rest of the hardware is basically the same as any other Sony camera, which means a lot of customization. It's also a very portable camera. But for me, it's just a little too small. Don't get mad at me. And on a full 10 hour wedding day, the smaller group can actually cause a bit more fatigue than other larger cameras I use. But this is still my favorite hardware of any Sony camera. I'm just hoping that someday they can go with an ever so slightly larger grip with a bit more room for larger buttons and controls. This camera also has all of the latest upgrades that Sony's been using. So full size HDMI port, dual card slots that can take both UHS-2 SD cards or CF Express type A. And you'll see why in a second that's really important. Plus a viewfinder is also class leading with 9.4 million dots and 120 frames per second refresh rate. I only wish I used it a little bit more because honestly, I'm rarely ever shooting at eye level. So I tend to use the screen a bit more and it looks like basically the same three inch panel from the previous camera, which is slightly smaller than other cameras. And it, it still just doesn't look amazing or even that bright for me. Technically it has a decent resolution. It just doesn't look great. From a camera manufacturer or company that makes some of the best TVs and phone screens ever made, they could really do so much better. Now the signature feature on the a7R5 is definitely the processors because a ton of new features are only possible because of these upgraded XR chips and a completely new unit that Sony is calling an AI processing unit. So I have had this camera, I've been using it like crazy. And while this is absolutely the most powerful autofocus system I've ever used, it still falls a little bit short of calling it AI to me because of one major reason. So let's dig into this autofocus system. 
The system itself, it feels absolutely amazing. It is crazy awesome because subject recognition has taken a massive technology leap. In real life, what it means is that my old cameras would sometimes show that it was focused on an eye, even though there was definitely not an eye in the frame. However, on the A7R5, that hasn't happened because the camera doesn't see a human, so it's not really looking for an eye. So I am used to Sony having the best eye autofocus system of any camera. And you know what, the Sony A7R5, it just took it to the next level for me. Once the camera locks on your subject, it's almost impossible for it to lose it. Even when I had my daughter spin around or walk behind a tree, it stayed on her. The camera immediately picked her up once she was back in the frame. Sony's also added new subject types that it can look for. So you have insects, planes, cars, birds, animals, and people. And all of those have way more tracking points and accuracy than before. I was also pretty impressed with how it handled things like sunglasses or even helmets. The camera is perfectly detecting an eye. Even when there was barely an eye in the frame, it was difficult for me to see in real life. And again, that's because it's using this AI to predict where the eye should be. So the biggest issue is that none of that autofocus selection happens automatically. You actually have to pick your subject. So I have to select, hey, I'm shooting a car, I'm shooting a person, an insect, whatever it is. You have to select that here. And if you don't, it doesn't actually use that information. It'll just default to like a normal tracking mode. Good news is you can actually program one of the custom buttons on here to select between them and cycle through it. You can also filter out whichever ones that you don't shoot. So if you don't shoot insects, you don't have to have it here. But it would have been awesome if the camera had maybe an auto mode so it would detect a person as a dominant subject and switch automatically to human. And if you wanted to manually override, you could. The AI system also felt a bit invasive. So for example, I'm shooting a car and the system worked up absolutely amazing. It was picking up the car no matter what happened. And then I went to photograph a brake caliper through the wheel and I used the smallest AF point, something that I would usually do on every other Sony camera and it kept recognizing the car. Even though I selected this small AF point and told the camera where I wanted to focus, it would just still focus on the car. The good news is that you can program a button to turn off AI subject recognition. So you can just cycle it on and off. So I programmed mine to the AF button. So I had it really quickly because I was needing to turn it on and off several times each of my shoots. And again, the system works extremely well. So I am super glad we have it. It is amazing technology, but it is not quite AI yet. So it's definitely a manual process and something you're probably gonna be turning on and off all the time in your shoots. Now video also has some massive updates and this has been pretty typical for Sony cameras the last few years. Basically the processors have become better and video is where things seem to make the bigger difference. So the A7R5 can now shoot 8K up to 24 frames per second or 25 frames per second in PAL and 4K up to 60 frames per second with up to 400 megabits per second in 8K and everything is 422 10-bit except 8K which is still 420 10-bit. This is a massive step up from the a7R4 that puts it more in line with Sony's other cameras. And what I love about Sony is that you can choose between 420, 422, different bit rates, bit depths, different codecs, logs, standard profiles. There are just so many options and you don't see that on a lot of other cameras like Canon. Plus you have a ton of new video features that Sony introduced with the a7 IV that I don't even have time to talk about. So all of that with better IBIS performance, better autofocus performance, all of the hardware features that this camera has. And you have one of the best cameras that Sony has made for video. So the video quality is a massive step up from the Sony a7R4. And warning, I do need to get a little bit technical, but the camera is doing some form of pixel binning to deal with all of those extra pixels in full frame, but it's doing a great job. And honestly, I couldn't notice a difference in detail between full frame and the oversampled crop modes unless I zoomed in to like 200% on a perfectly still frame with absolutely no motion blur, which is not something I would ever be doing on a normal shoot. 
Now what's interesting is 4K60 does have a mandatory 1.2 times crop, but it likely allows the camera to do a perfect four times pixel bin, just like the 50 megapixel Sony A1, which got me a little bit more detail than the 4K24 full frame. And it's not a big change in focal length, so you're still getting to use most of that sensor. In fact, I actually wish we could select a 1.2 times crop in the 4K24 as well, because this would get you more detail than full frame and also make it so that your frame isn't changing every time you switch between 24 frames per second and 60 frames per second. Now, AK also has a crop, but it's even smaller. And again, it does have more detail, but it took me zooming in past 200% on a still frame to even notice it. Now in low light, I didn't notice any like high ISO dual gain switch over 800 ISO, which a few other Sony cameras have to help them in low light. That said, I thought the camera performed pretty well for a high resolution camera. Up to about 6400 ISO was good for me, but beyond that, I definitely started to get pretty distracted by the noise levels. So we will have a bit more to say on image quality once we get full raw support, but so far, Things look like they're going to be pretty close to the a7R4 since it's basically using the same sensor. Although you might see a little bit difference in processing and colors as well, maybe a little bit better noise reduction. So we'll definitely test this out once we have full raw support. But just looking at the JPEGs, even those look absolutely amazing. And it's nice to be able to just pop into 100%, have this much larger image to be able to do some retouching or uh, Photoshop edits and things like that. And that's really where having 61 megapixels starts to show. There's definitely gonna be an advantage for people who are doing retouching, whether it's portraits or product photography. And obviously resolution goes a long way with extra large prints. But yeah, at first I was just a little bit bummed we weren't gonna see a major image quality upgrade. That said, the quality is stunning and Sally and I were both loving the images coming out of the camera and no one else is really doing anything better, which means the a7R5 is still leading in image quality despite carrying over that same sensor. One thing that will change is the file sizes, or at least it can change. Now we first saw this feature come through the a7 IV not too long ago, and it's one that we asked for in our a7R4 review. So now you can shoot in uncompressed raw, lossless compressed raw, and in different resolutions, and compressed RAW. That said, Sony was pretty much the only camera that didn't have this ability, and it does come with a major asterisk when it comes to frame rates. So on that note, the Sony a7R5 shoots the same 10 frames per second in mechanical shutter as the R4. It's definitely not the fastest, and it's been a long time since we've seen a frame rate boost on a Sony camera, but given that this camera is 61 megapixels, I'll give it a pass with 10 frames per second still being really quick. Now the asterisk is that you only get 10 frames per second with compressed RAW, which is a 12-bit file. So the new 14-bit lossless uncompressed is still gonna be limited to more like six to seven frames per second. I was hoping the faster processor would change this, but unfortunately it looks like we're gonna be dealing with the same speeds as before and that slower speed if you're using the new lossless compressed. Now what is a massive upgrade is that we now get dual card slots and both are UHS-2 compatible and both can also use Sony's CF Express Type A cards. And if you're using those cards, the buffer is not an issue at all in this camera and you can shoot high speed for a long time. There are also a ton of new features I really didn't even get a chance to test like improved pixel shift for getting even higher resolution images just in case 61 megapixels wasn't enough for you. Focus bracketing is now here. You have a ton of improvements with connection. So getting this camera to connect it to a laptop, if you're doing tethering or faster Wi-Fi, this now has USB 3.2 Gen 2. You can also live stream directly from this camera, just like the a7 IV. Plus there are a bunch of upgrades we've seen in other Sony cameras, but not in the R series yet. So you get the new menu system, which is overall improved, although there's still kind of a bit of duplicate items and some confusing settings going on. Also, they do have a new main menu, which kind of reminds me 
of like a video camera interface, except you can access it in both stills and video. And honestly, it was genuinely useful, especially in video. I could change almost everything I would need in a shoot right from this menu instead of having to navigate to like five different places in the menu to change like resolution, white balance, picture profiles, focus settings. Those are all things that would typically change mid shoot and they are all things that are all over the menu system. But now they are right here with this new menu. You're also gonna get an improved IBIS system. So this one is rated to eight stops up from five stops. But either way, this is an area that Sony was a little bit behind the competition in. And now it seems like they are improving things quite a bit. So I'll have some comparisons up soon to test out this new eight stop IBIS system. But speaking of that competition, and if you should actually upgrade, the a7R5 really kind of justifies itself above the a7 IV. You get all of the same features of the a7 IV, but with massive hardware upgrades and upgraded resolution, you get improvements to autofocus, better IBIS, some video upgrades as well with 8K and a smaller crop in 4K 60 plus a ton of just extra features like focus bracketing and pixel shift. But when it comes to upgrading from older Sony cameras like the a7R 4 if you shoot video at all, 100%, yes, you should. I mean, there are so many things I didn't even mention, like you don't have a record limit anymore, and the Sony a7R 5 doesn't overheat as much. But even the video quality on this camera is a massive step up from those previous 8-bit cameras. And with all of the new features, it's just a no brainer at all for me if you shoot video. Now, if you're a photographer, especially if you're happy with the autofocus system on your camera, I think it's a little bit tougher choice since most of the upgrades here feel like features you can live without. I will say sometimes when you try them out, you might wonder how you lived without them but it still feels like on the photography side, it might be a little bit more of a minor upgrade in most areas since things like quality and frame rate really aren't getting any big improvements. However, one thing it is getting upgraded is the price and it is going from 3,500 on the a7R4 to 3,900 in the a7R5. Unfortunately, we've kind of seen that in a lot of cameras right now, even the a7 IV went up $500. However, it does place the Sony a7R5 at the exact same price as the Canon R5, which is actually going to be the biggest competition for Sony right now. But the R5 was announced two years ago and it has faster frame rates, especially with electronic shutter where it can shoot 20 frames per second. The screen on the R5 looks better. The R5 can shoot 8K raw internally and 4K 120 with no crop. And you still have a really high resolution 45 megapixel sensor. Plus at two years old, we'll probably start seeing some sales on that camera. Obviously the R5, Canon R5, doesn't have the AI autofocus system, but I honestly don't know many people complaining about the AF performance on that camera because it was pretty dang good. However, once you start to dig in to a lot of the new features on the Sony a7R5, you're going to find that there's a lot of stuff here that is just not on other cameras. And I really feel like I barely scratched the surface on the R5 or the a7R5. Going over every new feature would take like an hour. And features like focus breathing, compensation, they're already out on some other Sony cameras but you definitely won't find it on Canon or Nikon. But on paper, the Sony a7R5 just doesn't stand out quite as much as I hoped, other than having a few extra pixels and using the word AI. But I think in most areas, the a7R5 might not technically win, like frame rates and the lack of 4K 120, but usability on the camera is way better and has quite a few features that might seem small, but the more you use the camera, you're gonna really start to appreciate them. But I'll have the camera back in my hands in a couple days, so follow me here, follow me over on IG. I've got some crazy shoots planned, so it should be fun. Hit me up with any questions you guys have. And as always, I'll be hanging out in the comments to see what you guys think of Sony's new a7R5. So guys, this is what's coming back in here. It is absolutely insane. So let me know which one of these you think we should take out next. I don't know, there is such a spread right here. You can actually follow this guy, all the cars and everything. It's SP2 underscore gentleman. So give him a follow on that one. But yeah, this is just absolutely crazy.